Hey guys, welcome back to Snes Life. Hope you're all well. So, I thought I'd do a new video today and got a few things to talk about. And if you've not watched one of these videos before, Snes Life is just a vlog video. So it's just going to be me chatting about what's going on in my life, what I'm doing, uh, showing you a few things I've picked up as well, talking about them. So yeah. So I thought what I do in this video is show you the stuff I've been buying as well because I haven't really done pickup videos in I, I don't know how long. And Ben, my good friend Shen Muso, pointed this out recently that I don't do pickup videos anymore, which is true. So Ben, I hope you enjoy this video, mate, because it's going to be pretty much a pickup video as well. <laughs> so yeah, in the last four months, I've bought the odd thing here and there, and they've accumulated. So I thought, why not? I was going to do separate videos for like gaming and film and music, like I usually do. And I thought, you know what? I'm in the mood to do a video today, so I'm just going to do a snares of life and just put it all in the same video. That way, it can please everybody so everyone's got something to pick to watch. So I will, if you look down in the description, there will be a timeline down there, so obviously you can avoid anything you're not interested in. Because I know not everybody's interested in film, not everybody's interested in vinyl, and you know I would assume that majority of my audience are interested in gaming, so <laughs> at least I get that part right. All right, anyway, so first up, before we do any of that, uh, the retro gaming... Yeah, another update. I know I keep doing them every time, but hey, here you go. So, the Mega Drive didn't sell last time. I said, told you that. But I have managed to sell it now. I sold it a few days ago. Uh, I was very lucky. A guy came along, made me a decent offer for the console and five games. So, I thought, fair enough. Did the deal. That's out. So, that should be delivered shortly. Uh, it's out for delivery today, actually. I've got two games left, which are Juju Densetsu, otherwise known as Toki Going Ape Spit, which is a brilliant platformer. And Altered Beast, which is one of my favourites, which I know a lot of people don't like. So they're up for sale on eBay at the moment. They're still there, so hopefully those will go at some point soon. Although I doubt it, because it seems to be really, really difficult to shift Japanese Mega Drive stuff. I don't know why. Super Famicom, piss easy. It sells really quickly. Japanese Mega Drive does not sell easily. I don't know what that's about. But yeah, I've done that. So I'm pretty much out of retro now. I'm, I'm pretty much done. The only thing I've got left, as you can probably see in the background, is a Crystal Xbox, which I, I'll tell you what I was going to do with that. The plan was, I was going to just, I was thinking about it, but I was going to go back and just go and buy a ton of Xbox games and build another Xbox collection because they're only like £2 each from Music Magpie. The games aren't expensive. But then when I thought about it, I thought, well, do I really want to do that? Probably not, because there's a lot of games I won't play, like last time I had the collection. And then I thought, well, how about just buying specific games, you know, like the Halos and Dead of Our Lives and all the, the games that I enjoy playing and I'll, I'll replay multiple times, which I have done over the years. That's a good idea. And if I'm going to do that, instead of going to Music Magpie and paying £2 a game and, you know, you never know what the condition is, it's pot luck when they arrive. They're usually all right, but they're not brilliant because they use games. So, you know, you might as well pay a few extra quid and hunt down a mint or close to mint copy. And then the, the more I thought about it, I was just I was just knew in my mind that this was not something I wanted to do. That getting involved in the original Xbox was, I've done it before, I don't need to do it again. And so what I did instead, I started watching a lot of my older videos. Watching videos that I've made where over the years, uh, such as if you've been watching for a while, the deflated video I did a long time ago, the psychology of the video game collector, and I haven't watched my most recent one when I decided to quit retro gaming because I can't watch that video because it's really hard to watch. But yeah, I was watching a few of those and I watched a few pickup videos and I was just, it just for the first time the light came on and it's really weird. I've never, because you can't really see yourself, can you? you? You know, others can see what you're like, but you don't really see it properly. And so watching those videos was a great reference point because I looked back and I watched them and I thought, Jesus Christ, Pete, what were you doing? Going back and forth, back and forth. You know, I was watching the video, and I, I, I think it's like 2013, and in the one video I'm talking about selling all this stuff off because I'm sick and tired of it, and it was when I had a massive clear out a couple of years back and sold a ton of stuff. And then a couple of months, like six months later, but there I am, I've brought back a Dreamcast, a Jaguar, and a few other consoles, and it was just silly. I was like, what are you doing, you twat? And so it was a real eye-opener, and then I saw myself with my Xbox collection, and the one pickup video I saw, it wasn't about Xbox games, but other games, but the Xbox collection was in the in the corner. And there's a hundred and no, two hundred over two hundred games I had at that point, apparently. And I'm on camera and I'm I'm saying about how I don't even play most of the games and I don't want to play a lot of them. And you know, this is in fact no, that was that was right. It was after that. I saw I was talking about how I was uh, conflicted in that video. It was the one where I sold everything that I was saying, Oh, I've got over two hundred Xbox games and it's time to get rid of them because I don't really care. 
And that just made me think, you know what? What is the point? Or oh, the two quid a time music magpie. Or I could just buy specific games in good condition. But what really is the point? And, you know, I'm only going to be in the same position again. And I did actually buy two Xbox games before I made this decision. Um, but I'm, I don't mind that because they are games that I'm going to replay. And they are 360 compatible, so that's a bonus. So, yeah, I've decided to def that. I'm just not going to bother buying Xbox games. I'll just get dragged back in again. So, yeah, I'm out of the red show anyway. For the time being, I'm done. Uh, there is no more. There are no consoles coming, no games coming, nothing. So, that's great. Right, so, in terms of gaming, it is going to be... And I do apologise. There seems to be a lot of traffic for some reason today. <laughs> Typical. After the window open, because I'll just steam up otherwise. And, yeah, so, in terms of gaming, I'm really... My focus now is just going to be... Uh, last gen Xbox 360, PS3, and of course current gen PS4 and Xbox One. That's where I'm at. It's a lot easier to do. And uh, you know, going back with 360, there's so many games that are so so cheap now. So it's absolutely brilliant. So that's what I've been doing. I've been playing a lot of Xbox 360 games, and I've been picking up a few games over the last four months. Uh, most of the games now you can get for a five or less, brand new, sealed, delivered. I mean, you can't argue with that. Some of them are a little bit more expensive, maybe 10 to 15 quid, but for the most part, pretty much all these games I'm gonna show you were less than a fiver. There's only one that wasn't, so you can't argue with that. Now, I've talked about a few of these in the past, but you know, hey, what the hell? If you've never seen me before, this will be new to you. So here we go. First up is a great game, and it is Medal of Honor Tier 1. Now, I've talked about this many times on my channel. I absolutely adore this game. It's fantastic. I also picked up, of course, Medal of Honor Warfighter, the sequel. Both absolutely fantastic first-person shooters. Now, I know it depends on the type of shooter that you like. I personally prefer these because they're more gritty. I like the story. I like the, the characters that they created. I thought they were really distinct characters that you always remember the names of. You actually invest with them as well, I found. The first game, it, it does a good job of building the character, starting you off. But Warfighter does a fantastic job of really making you care about these characters and it gets really, really emotional. And if you've not played it, I won't spoil it, but by the end of the game, it's really gut-wrenching. It's absolutely fantastic. And the, the character models in the cutscenes for Warfighter are just ridiculous. They're so lifelike. Considering it's last gen, very impressive. But yeah, I, I absolutely love those games. I like the first one because the, in terms of level design, it's a lot um, smaller. So you'll find yourself walking through the Afghani mountains and you don't know where no one's coming from and suddenly people just come running across the mountaintop and shoot you up and it's not like Call of Duty where it's just full on visceral this is really small moments and it makes you it gives you more of an essence of what it must be like to actually be a soldier obviously you're never going to get the real thing but it gives you an idea and I, I really like it Warfighter it starts off a bit like Battlefield and I think they kind of lost the way a little bit there and as the game progresses it gets back to the original tier one style but the story arc in Warfighter is just worth playing just for that alone because the character development is fantastic. I, I absolutely love those two games and it's a shame that so many people don't play them. You know, it seems that you know Call of Duty and Battlefield are the two big ones. Medal of Honor got pushed under the carpet and they're you know it's now on the back burner. It's not cancelled, thank God. It's just you know EA have said that they're just waiting for the right time. Uh, so I'm assuming they're just waiting for someone to come up with a good story. I just hope if they do make a new one for this generation, they don't ditch those characters and reboot the franchise. They probably will. But if anybody from EA is watching, or the developer, uh, Danger Close, if they even make the next one, they might not make the next one, actually, because they probably won't let them. Whoever, whoever's watching, if you're a developer and you're going to make the next Medal of Honor game, please stick with those characters, because those characters are so well-defined in those two games, and I absolutely love playing with those characters. It's just, yeah, it's just incredible. Anyway, so that's those two. Next up, I picked up Max Payne 3. I absolutely love this game. Uh, it's my third time playing through this game now. And I've got to say, it's still brilliant. It can be pretty bloody tough. You know, near, near the end of the game, in the airport in particular, I always have difficulty getting through that. It's, it's, there's just so many men coming at you, and it's so limited in terms of painkillers as well. You have to really hunt to try and find them where they are. I found a couple in the bathroom which helped me, but... Yeah, it took me many attempts to get through it, but I did it. But other than that, I mean, I just love the whole game. I love the, the story. I love the, the, the art design. The guy who does Max Payne's voice does an amazing job of the narration. It's really dry and dark humour. Uh, it's just it's so funny and so brilliantly executed. You know, the game itself plays beautifully. The, the gunplay is spot on. The cover's spot on. Uh, yeah, I really can't fault Max Payne 3. I mean, obviously it was made by Rockstar with help from Remedy, but... Remedy made the first two games. But I think they did a really 
good job of making a third game, you know, without Remedy and having Rockstar make it and not completely ruin what Max Payne is. Uh, the slow mo is still there. Although I do feel that this one, it probably was just put in there because it's Max Payne and it probably would have served it better to be a, just a straightforward cover shooter. But yeah, I, I had so much fun playing for this game. It's just fantastic. Max is such a great character. Um, and yeah, it's just the violence. It's, it's brutal. But yeah, a really, really, really fun game. If you've never played Max Payne 3, then I highly recommend it. I think it cost me like five quid sealed. Might have been even a little bit less, so it's well worth picking that one up. Next up is a game I haven't managed to finish yet, and it's called Inversion. So all of these games are finished by this one. So I picked up Inversion because I've never played it, didn't know much about it, and I thought it looked interesting when I looked at some gameplay, the cover shooter like Gears of War. And it's basically a cheap version of Gears of War. Um, the, the acting and that, I just give up watching the cutscenes because it's so bad. It's like uh, Sega Arcade acting, you know, like House of the Dead. It's, it's, but not as, at least with that, it's funny and it's watchable. This is just crap. <laughs> it's just corny. But I, I have managed to get through it because there's these characters which I can't remember the name of. And they just spawn loads of little dudes at you. These little dudes run at you. And it, oh man, it's so frustrating. And they keep coming up. And it's about the third time I got to one of these things. And I just got sick and tired of trying to kill it. I got really pissed off with the game. But it, it's an alright game. I will go back and try and finish it. Because I can't be that far from the end now. But yeah, it's just an alright game. I mean, at the end of the day, I see it this way. Because the games are so cheap now, I'm more likely to give them a try because they're so cheap. And I'm not going to be so pissed off if they're crap. So it's not a crap game, it's just a bit annoying as hell really. It's just a very cheap Gears of War, even as that Gears of War run mode where you hold the A button down and it, it runs uncontrollably and you, I really don't like that. <laughs> I don't like it in Gears, it irritates me because you can't see what's going on with the camera and it just feels really awkward, you've got no real control over the character, but yeah, inversion's all right. I definitely, if you like them kind of shooters, then give it a shot, it's only a couple of quid. Uh, then I picked up one of my favorite games from last gen, Modern Warfare 3. One of the best Call of Duty games, in my opinion. I absolutely love this game. Played it many times now. And playing through it recently, I wasn't sure if it was still going to hold up, and it does. It's fantastic, you know, from the turbulence level to the Africa mission to just being in New York with the Stock Exchange. It's fantastic. The level design is so well laid out. Going on the London Underground as well. It's just really well-crafted Call of Duty. Definitely one of the best ones for me in terms of campaign stories. You know, really great uh, character arcs. Fantastic level design. Uh, gunplay is always solid because it's Call of Duty. It's always well designed. So guarantee the gameplay is going to be good. But yeah, I really, really enjoy it. And the, the graphics they all look really, really good. The thing I like about 360 is that the games were upscaled to 1080p as well. Unlike PS3, where it seems that the majority of them are 720, which I never really understood that. Because as far as I understood, it was because of frame rates is what I never did 1080p. Yet the Xbox is weaker than the PS3, and the PS3 can't upscale to 1080p. Hmm. Well, it can, but obviously they don't. They choose not to do it. I don't know if that's down to the cell processor or what it was, processor. Um, but anyway, whatever. They look fantastic. I mean, when you're on the submarine at the beginning of Modern Warfare 3, I was looking around and I took a shot of it and sent it to Alex Blue Tonic because I was really impressed. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, great game. Then I picked up an absolutely brilliant game I've never seen anyone talk about, The Bourne Conspiracy. This is fantastic. I remember playing this a couple of years back, um, Guy on YouTube, Mark, Nemesis, he did a video of it, and that's what got me to buy it, because initially when it first came out, I played a demo. Remember when we used to get them? <laughs> Demos, yeah. Um, I played a demo, and it was the, the scene from Born Identity where he's in the embassy, and it's all quick time events, and it put me right off buying the game. I thought, no, nah, I'm not going to play that, because I hate QTEs, and it'll just piss me off. But I watched Mark play, and it was a cover shooter, and I was like, hang on, what the hell's going on? And this is only a couple of years ago. So I went out and bought it, and I absolutely loved it. And I played it recently, and it's brilliant. It's still really good. It's basically a third-person cover shooter, Uncharted style. And you play as Jason Bourne, obviously. And it's got its own storyline, but it has bits of identity thrown in there. So you get to do, like, the Clive Owen bit in the farmhouse, which is really cool. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really, really solid shooter, really fun. Um, I guess there's little bits that annoy me. You know, if you don't time it right with your QTEs, they can you know penalise you, like a lot of those old games do. They do that ridiculous thing where you know, you'll be you'll go into a cutscene and it'll suddenly throw a QTE and you're like, oh for Christ's sake! And you, you know you put your controller down, you're in a cup of tea and it's like bloody thing. So you you miss it and it's told you to press A. It reboots it, so you get ready to press A and it goes, oh no B, and you miss it again. You're like, for Arr! you know. But yeah, that's just the way those games were. But nonetheless, very cool game. Then I picked up another absolutely brilliant title, 007 Bloodstone. So yeah, there's a lot of like first person and third person going on, I know. 
I know Labossu won't be too happy about that. <laughs> but this is absolutely fantastic. I've played this game, I don't know how many times now. I'll just keep playing through it every now and again. Just when I just need something to kick back with. Um, cracking game. As I say, another cover shooter. It's its own story. It's not based around any of the Bond films. And yeah, I really, really enjoy it. It's, it's a really good standalone Bond game. Yeah, and uh, we need a new Bond game. It's been a long time there since Legends, which was bloody terrible. But Bloodstone is absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's got a decent story. It's, it's nothing particularly amazing. The cutscenes are pretty terrible because you know you've got Clayface, Judy Dench, which looks bloody awful, and you've got um, Joss Stone as the love interest, which why? <laughs> like she could act, but um, <laughs> but yeah, the actual game is really really fun. It's just a lot of cover shooting. There are, I've said before, Bizarre Creations made this, who did the Project Gotham games. Now they're renowned for making great car games. There's, there's car sections in this which are absolutely terrible. This was made around the time, I believe, when Bizarre Creations went under, so maybe they just didn't bother to really put the full effort in. But the car sections are incredibly frustrating. The amount of times I went off-road and crashed the car, and especially the ice level, the amount of times I dumped that car in the bloody water, it drove me insane, but... <laughs> other than that I really really like it the, the cover shooting sections are worth playing it for alone it's just a, one of those games where you just put it on kick back with your controller and just relax and don't get stressed out and just enjoy the moment you know it's a few hours and it's done but it's really really good so then I picked up the most expensive game I bought recently which was how much did I pay for this I think this was like 12 quid so it's a little bit more all pricey uh, it is Quantum of Solace the 007 game Another game that I absolutely love, made by Treyarch, the Call of Duty guys, or one of the Call of Duty guys. And this one is a first-person shooter, but it also has cover as well. It's weird. It's not a third-person game, it's a first-person game, but you can go into cover, and then it will the camera will switch out, and you'll see Bond's face, and you'll see him leaning against the wall. It's a very strange way of doing things, but it works really well. Uh, it's a lot of fun, very action-packed, as you'd expect from a Bond game. It is Quantum of Solace. Uh, however, because the film's shit and there isn't a lot of material to work with, it's pretty much Casino Royale. They do a good job of what they do. Is the, the girl, I can't remember the name of, who's in Quantum of Solace. Um, you get to a part in the game early on. and Basically, you're doing a flashback. He tells her what's happened before, so they've got an excuse to take you back and play through Casino Royale. So you get to do the bit where you're chasing the guy down in Africa, and the airport and all of this sort of stuff. Uh, it's, it's really, really, really well done. I, I absolutely love it. I've, I've talked about Quantum of Solace in the past. Uh, if you've never played it, I highly recommend it. You know, for me personally, last generation Bond wise, you've got 007 Quantum of Solace, 007 Bloodstone, both brilliant. 007 Legends is an absolute travesty. Um, it's just a mess of a game. Then you have the best one, which was GoldenEye, but don't buy GoldenEye Reloaded on the 360 PS3 because it's not a good version. The best version is GoldenEye on the Wii. Um, you know, Matt Solfunk Retro, he actually worked on the game and he talks about what happened to the development of both versions of that game, which was really interesting in one of his videos. So go and check out Matt's channel, actually, because Matt's a great guy and he's really interested to hear his insight into the games he's made as well. So that's the 360 stuff. As I say, I have picked up a couple of Xbox originals as well. Uh, a bit of, as Shenmue calls it, the, the OG. So I've only picked up two so far because as I say, I don't really want to get into collecting for it. And I'm not entirely certain I'm going to buy any more. But I picked up two games in really nice shape. The first one I got was Dead or Alive 3. As I say, I picked these up before, decided not to buy for it. Great fighter. Uh, I had it on launch in 2001 and I still think the game looks great. I've, it's surprising how well it holds up actually. The weather effects. Hello. <laughs> the weather effects and everything. Oops, hang on, wait with me one second. No, it's all right. Just wondered if it was the postman or something, it's not. Anyway, yeah, the weather effects look really nice. The snow, the water looks really, really good. I think the game holds up exceptionally well for a 15 year old game. Um, Cracking Fighter. I much prefer that to Dead or Alive 4. I couldn't play that, I found that too difficult. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not very good at Dead or Alive anyway in terms of the blocking and the counter moves. I'm much better at just punching and kicking people in the face. But there you go. And then the other game I picked up, both of these are 360 compatible. This one had to be bought, and it is Black, which is from Criterion. Yeah, Criterion, uh, published by EA. Uh, still, for me, the best first-person shooter of that generation. You know, Halo, obviously, Combat Evolved is an amazing game. But for me, I prefer Black. I go back and play Black all the time, and I never get bored. I'm playing it, obviously, at the moment on the 360. Looks fantastic on the 360. Except you get the annoying borders down the side, but hey. That's just the way that game was developed, because Dead or Alive is actually full screen, which is nice. 
But anyway, yeah, Black is just an incredible first person shooter. It's a military shooter. Uh, the tagline is going all guns blazing. And basically that's what you do. You just go on missions. They set the mission up at the beginning with a little cutscene, a bit of an FMV. And then you get into the game and you just blow shit up. And it's fantastic. You get rocket launchers, machine guns, handguns, submachine guns. It's just great grenades, mines. You know, it's fantastic. And the best thing is once you complete the game the first time as well, you then unlock the silver weapons and you get unlimited ammunition, which is brilliant. Because then you can use your grenade launchers and your rocket launchers and just blow everyone to pieces. Don't see any explodes. I've played it multiple times now, and I've never ever got bored of playing Black. Without doubt, one of the best you know, games of that generation. For me, the best first-person shooter. And I played a lot of first-person shooters that generation. But yeah, it's it's definitely up there for me with Halo, Combat Evolved, and what was that game called um, on the PS2? And I'm gonna I knew I was gonna forget the bloody name of it now. <sighs> What's that game on the PS2 called? I don't know, I'll come to me. You'll probably see a graphic. <laughs> I can't remember what it's called, but it's a really, really cool first person shooter. But yeah, Black Man, brilliant game. All right, so that's what I've been doing gaming wise. So I'm just doing that at the moment, just buying 360 games. What I'm doing as well, instead of just buying games like I, we all do and just having collections and all this, I'm just buying one or two 360 games for a fiver a piece, play through them, which takes me a couple of weeks to do that because I don't get to play them straight through. And then once I've done that, just buy a couple more and play through them. And it's a lot, I mean, these games last gen are a lot easier to get, and this gen are a lot easier to play through as we know the stories and, that and the save states and everything. So it's really simple to just play through the whole game and enjoy it for what it is. So, guys, anyway, next up, we're going to talk about film. Now, I've got a few Blu rays I've been picking up, a couple of things that needed to be bought because I hadn't got around to getting them yet. So, first up, we have, just moving forward, right, first one is Hunger Games Mocking J Part 2. So I finally got around to buying it. I've got all the other Hunger Games films and I never got to see it at the cinema because the reviews were a bit weak. I heard it was quite boring and the first part was slow anyway. So I watched it anyway just to give it a, you know, just to end the the, 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 the films. Christ, I can't even think what I'm talking about. Yeah, so <laughs> just to, to wrap it up. Um, yeah, it was all right. It was, it was okay and yeah, it is kind of boring. I'll be honest. I, I kind of lost a little bit of interest halfway through. And there wasn't enough action in this one. Um, yeah, I felt, I think the, the first couple of films were better than the Mockingjay films, definitely. I don't know if it was actually necessary to have two parts to it. But it was still a solid Hunger Games film. I still enjoyed it. I just, it wasn't particularly great. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, I picked up Spectre, just to complete the James Bond collection, the old Daniel Craig. There's a lot of Bond in this video, isn't there? So, yeah. Now, I watched it at the cinema. And I liked it. I didn't love it, but I liked it. For me, it wasn't anywhere near as good as Skyfall, but it was still a solid film. Having watched it on Blu-ray, I'm actually li liking it a little bit less. It's weird. Um, I, I thought it'd be about the same, but I don't know. It just There's something about the film that doesn't really work. It's a good film. I can't think of what someone said to me recently. I think it might have been um, Murray that said, it's, it's basically the problem with Spectre is it's just set pieces. And I thought, yeah, you're absolutely right. That's the nail on the head. It's just a, se a sequence of set pieces. It's not really a cohesive film. Whereas with Skyfall and Casino Royale, narratively, they're absolutely brilliant. But it's not just shit blowing up and people getting shot at. You know, there's a lot more to it. There's a lot of that in those films. But, you know, there's a lot more as well. There's a lot more character development and a lot more interesting things to see. Spectre, I don't know. It was a good film, but it just, it's, again, it's like Pierce Brosnan, you know, Daniel Craig has Casino Royale, brilliant. Quantum of Solace, shite. Skyfall, absolutely stunning, my favourite one. Spectre, eh, not quite quantum level, but nowhere near Casino Royale and Skyfall level. So, yeah, I mean, Pierce Brosnan had the same thing, you know. I watched those films last year for the first time, and Goldeneye was right up there, brilliant. Tomorrow Never Dies was right down there, because it was absolute trash, except for the last probably half an hour. That bike take sequence, that was really cool. And then, of course, you had The World Is Not Enough, which was back up there with Goldeneye. Brilliant. Love those two films. And then The Die Another Day, for me, funny enough, is actually up there. Because I know a lot of people hate that film and think it's shit. But I love the campiness and the cheesiness and the, the invisible car and all the stupidity of the film. I found it really quite funny and amusing and really quite enjoyable. Uh, I will be getting those on Blu-ray eventually. I've just not got around to buying them. So anyway, next up, I picked up Slice Alone Film. Bullet to the head. So it's funny enough, I was 
saw this years ago and when it came out and I've forgotten about the film and me and my dad were talking about films the other week and he just watched World War Z on TV World War Z on TV uh, which made me go and watch it back on Blu-ray which I think I talked about in a previous video and so I thought oh yeah brilliant and we were just talking and I thought I was asking, I remember that sliced alone film, and I was like, oh, "What's that called? Bullet to the head or Bullet in the head?" I wasn't sure what it's was called, so I looked it up, and I went and bought it because I remember it being a decent film. It's not like it's like a sort of a B movie action film, really. I suppose B action movie. Uh, it's it's just, it's basically about sliced alone's character and the guy who is um, I can't what his name is. If you watch a TV show Chicago PD, he's one of the cops in that. Um, he's Antonio. He's, he's Antonio in Chicago PD. I don't know the actor's name. But him and Sly Stallone are hitmen. They go to do a job. It goes south. And yeah, that's why they, they go. I'm trying to remember that. I only watched it a couple of weeks ago. They do a job. They kill a guy. There's a prostitute in the shower who Sly Stallone doesn't kill. He lets her survive. And then the guys who sent him to do the job do a clean up and try and kill Sly Stallone and the bloke who plays Antonio in Chicago PD. Uh, he gets whacked. Sly obviously survives because he's Sly Stallone. He's the star of the movie. And it's about Sly taking revenge and killing them all. Uh, it's very visceral. There's a lot of blood packs, which I loved, which is nice to see proper violence for a change in a film. Um, not that I'm a sicko, it's just that I get sick of modern films because it's, you know, no one really gets shot or hurt, do they? You know, you, you break bones, but you don't really see the impact. They get shot, they sort of fall over. There's no real impact and blood. So, yeah, it's not like the 80s. But this is like an 80s action movie. And, you know, for me, that's a good thing. So, yeah, Bullet to the Head is a cracker. And I think it cost me like three quid or something delivered. So, well worth watching it just for that, I think. Uh, then I went, uh, what I decided to do next is my second favourite director at the moment is Ben Affleck after Antoine Fuqua. Now, I had already got The Town, but I hadn't got these other two films. So I went out and picked up Gone Baby Gone and also Argo. So I just wanted to make sure I got them. So I watched Gone Baby Gone again, because obviously I've watched these before when they came out. Uh, Gone Baby Gone. I'd say on second viewing, it, does, it isn't as good as the first viewing because obviously I knew what was coming and what the, the outcome was. So it's a, if you don't know, it's about a kidnapped girl in, in Boston and Casey Affleck, Ben's brother, plays the lead role and he's a PI and he's trying to get him in the community because the police can't make headway because the community won't talk to them and him being from, the, from, that, um, from Boston, he can talk to the people and they'll, they'll open up to him. And there's a whole conspiracy and everything. It's really good. I won't spoil it, but it's, it's well worth watching. It's a great film, and Ben does a fantastic direction on it. But yeah, second viewing. It's one of them films that you really can only watch once, I think. Argo, on the other hand, is brilliant. Second viewing of Argo, and I absolutely love it. Uh, it's about a load of American, I think they're diplomats in Iran, in Iran in the 70s. And this is a true story. And the, the Ayatollah and everything, it all kicks off. And the country's going to pot. And they try and attack the American embassy. And the, and the Americans, some of them manage to get out. And they hide out in the Canadian minister's house, played by Victor Garber, awesome actor. And it's about the Americans and the CIA trying to find a plan to get these guys out of Iran safely. And Ben Affleck's character comes up with a plan to make a film, and it's called Argo. And basically what they do is... They go to Hollywood and they pretend they make it look legit. They hire people, they put adverts for casting and all of that. And they make it look absolutely 100% real that they're making this film Argo in order for the Iranians to believe it. And they go to Iran and they have to rescue these guys. It's a fascinating story and considering it's a real story, it's amazing. And Ben did an amazing job on this film. So I'd highly recommend checking it out if you've not watched that one. Uh, next up, I picked up the Steven Seagal collection. And on this collection you get Under Siege, Under Siege 2... Hard to Kill, Nico Above the Law, which I believe in the UK is just called Nico normally, because I think Above the Law is the US uh, name, and Executive Decision with Kurt Russell, which I don't remember, so I need to watch that. So yeah, I picked this up because I wanted to get Nico and Hard to Kill, basically. I don't care about Under Siege. Those are all right movies. You know, for me, it's all about Nico, Hard to Kill, Out for Justice and Mark for Death. Those are the four Steven Seagal movies that you need to watch. All the other stuff he made is average, or the stuff he makes now is utter shite. Uh, you know, especially if, you know, if you're a fan of Steven Seagal's current movies go back and watch those first four movies and you'll see the difference the guy can actually act he actually makes an effort to act the fighting is real it's actually him fighting not tricky camera work you, know, you can see him kicking the shit out of people unlike now where he doesn't really do anything he's too big and fat and lazy and the, the camera does all the work for him uh, these new films these films are so bad now it's, it's just a real shame for me because I watched Nico recently, I haven't got around to watch any of the others yet, unfortunately. 
and it's such a good film and he's so charismatic in that role and to see the potential that was there for Steven Seagal I'd love to know what happened why he gave up and just didn't bother and just make any old crap now it's such a shame uh, I, you know and you know aside from these films his music's really good noise he's an amazing blues player blues guitarist he, he, I love his music he's great but yeah I don't know man real shame but it's a good collection anyway it's only a tenner from Amazon so well worth buying uh, then I picked up uh, a hole in my Antoine Fuqua collection. Fuqua, love saying that. Uh, Mary, uh, Safe Pa, Safe Paw, Safe Pa, what the hell was that? Safe Paw with Jake Gyllenhaal, which I watched on Sunday. Amazing boxing film. If you've not seen it, highly recommend checking this movie out. It's amazing. Basically, Jake Gyllenhaal, it's a rocky story. He's got it all. He's at the top. He loses it all, and he has to get it all back again. But the character-driven nature of this film is just just what sells it it's brilliant Jake Gyllenhaal's performance is incredible he does all the boxing himself none of it's stuntmen which is just amazing to see or body doubles uh, you've got Forrest Whitaker as his mentor which is you know an amazing actor anyway but does an incredible job but the best one was I think her name's Una Lawrence who plays his daughter what an incredible little actress I think she's got an amazing career if she continues because she's just so good in okay, the, the little moments that they had together so here we are I'm back again with Southpaw that's what we were talking about, wasn't it? So, yeah, Jake Gyllenhaal, boxing movie, directed by Antoine Fuqua. Uh, absolutely incredible film, as I say. Gyllenhaal does all the boxing himself, no body doubles or anything like that. Uh, it gives him this stellar performance. You've got Rachel McAdams as his wife, Una Lawrence plays his daughter, and you've got 50 Cent as his initial manager at the beginning of the film, as a sleazy bastard. And then you've got Forrest Whitaker, who plays the mentor that brings him back up and trains him to, to get back to the top. Uh, all incredible performances across the board and 50 Cent man I, mean, I was really impressed with his performance in this film he's finally given the character to actually work with because normally you know like most rappers when they're trying to act in they're always sidelined and given the same old fog rolls um, and stereotypes whereas you know 50 is really really good in Southport I was really impressed with his performance and you know great job uh, but for me the standout is Una Lawrence the daughter her performance when she's acting alongside Jake Gyllenhaal they're totally believable as father and daughter. They're absolutely incredible. And I think she's going to have an amazing career. Yeah. Love, love, love South Paul. Uh, the way it's shot as well. The boxing is just so real. It just looks like a real boxing match. You know, and they use real cam proper camera work like HBO. They use the proper commentators, the real commentators. It's just an amazing piece of work. Highly recommend checking that out. Uh, the only other two films I've got, American Pie and American Pie 2. Still sealed. I only just got them. Basically, just wanted to fill the gaps because I've got number three and I've got Reunion. I just needed to get those two because I used to have them on Region 1 DVD and they got sold a long time ago. So there we go. So that's that. Next up is music. So it's going to be vinyl time. So that'll be most of my audience going away now. <laughs> so I picked up a couple of records first of all, some older records, and then I bought some new records as well. So the older records are for one of my favourite groups from the 90s, Two Unlimited. And I'm a massive fan of Two Unlimited. Growing up as a teenager, I listened to them all the time. I used to record all of their music, their videos, on VHS, I used to record their performances on top of the pops. I still have them actually recorded on VHS. I have those tapes from back then. I absolutely love them. If you don't know who they are, they're a techno pop group consisting of Ray the Rapper and Anita the Singer, put together by two Belgian producers. Absolutely incredible. They're both Dutch, by the way. Both incredible artists in their own right, and they're absolutely amazing together. And so I have all their music anyway. I have singles, I have all their albums on CD. But I wanted to just check out and see if, because I'm really enjoying buying records, I wanted to see if I can get their albums on vinyl. Um, I managed to get them on Discogs, couldn't get them on eBay at the time. They are getting listed now, but not really these versions. They seem to be more the, the European releases, which is a bit weird. But I managed to get these for a couple of quid each. Uh, really nice condition as well. Uh, first one up is Get Ready. Look at that for a cover. I love that 90s rave style, the yellow, the blue, the pink. It looks fantastic. On the back, we've got a nice picture of Ryan and Anita in their young early days i think ray was like 20 21 and anita was like 19 at the time so yeah proper young uh, great album so on this you've got like get ready for this you've got twilight zone magic friends workaholic uh, you've got a song called rougher than the average which didn't get released which is a great track this one's a bit of a mix-up album because you get orchestral and ray versions of a song and then you'll get a rap version with ray on it and uh, for me two unlimited is always at the best when you've got ray and anita together you've got ray doing his raps and anita singing alongside uh, yeah, all of these records and all, for mass produced records, they're absolutely fantastic. They're quite thick and the sound quality is excellent on them, so very impressed. So that's Get Ready, the debut album. Second album, 
is No Limits, which as you'll know from the song No Limit, obviously, because that's their massive hit they had. And this one's got No Limit, it's got Tribal Dance, Faces, Maximum Overdrive, Let the Beat Control Your Body. Uh, also has a couple of other songs that were never released, such as Kiss Me, Bliss Me, and Mysterious, which I really like. The only songs I don't like are the last two, which are Where Are You Now and Shelter For A Rainy Day, which are basically R&B songs, not two unlimited tracks. They're just Anita um, songs. So I don't know what happened there. They were pushing Ray out and they're trying to promote Anita more because she was really popular with the, the men. I don't know. but uh, <laughs> And she still is because she's still beautiful even now. Um, she's aging very well. Um, yeah, anyway. So yeah, great album. Love No Limit. And then... My favourite album of Till Unlimited is Real Things, which I've really chopped. I got this, this was the first one I picked up because I, I just, I wasn't sure if I was going to buy all three of them. And then I just thought, screw it, I've got to get all three. If I'm buying this, I've got to buy the other two as well. And I'm glad I did because they, they all sound so good. Anyway, this one's got the real thing. Or every single song on this album, by the way, is pure gold. There isn't a single song on this song, album I don't enjoy. It's, it's a brilliant album. You just play it back to back. So you've got the real thing, do what I like, here I go, burning like fire, great track. Info Super Highway, which is fantastic. Very prophetic about this modern society we live in now, if you listen to the lyrics. It's quite strange. Uh, Hypnotised, turned into something wild. Escaping music. Sensuality, one of my favourite tracks on the album. No One, Face to Face, What's Mine is Mine. And my absolute favourite song of Two Unlimited, Nothing Like the Rain. Slower song, but I just, I just love that record. Uh, yeah, really, really, really happy as a fan to have these in the collection. The only one I don't have and I can't get hold of is the greatest hits album, Hits Unlimited. So I've read online, apparently on vinyl, it's only released in Greece. And there's nothing on Discogs, there's nothing on eBay, no one's selling it. So if it ever comes up, I know it's going to be expensive unless I get lucky and someone doesn't realise that it's not getting listed and they can just stick it on for a couple of quid. If you know anyone who's got a copy for sale and it's not ridiculously priced or you've got a copy and you want to sell it and you don't want to take the piss with the price, let me know because I really want a copy of Hits Unlimited on vinyl just to complete the four albums be great so i've been watching two unlimited on youtube for the last few years and i'm following ray and anita both on twitter anita doesn't really tweet but ray tweets all the time pretty much every day uh it's really cool as well because he actually replies to your tweets which blows my mind as a fan of two unlimited growing up you know i used to watch them all the time and listen to their music all the time and to be able to actually just tweet ray and have him tweet back even if it's just you know a thanks or just a little you know oh that's cool whatever it might be it's just the, you've got some kind of interaction with somebody you're a fan of I still find that quite weird, <laughs> but it's really cool. So I've been watching them, and they've been doing loads of performances ever since they did the oh, I Love the 90s gig, um, and, they, and they started doing a comeback after that. And they've done loads of live gigs. They've put out some new music as well, which was fantastic. They were going by Ray and Anita at one point because they couldn't use Too Unlimited because one of the producers wouldn't allow it. Then he allowed it, and they, they were Too Unlimited. Uh, recently, unfortunately, they've stopped working together. Anita has now gone away to do her solo career again. She's reviving that, which was great the first time because the first album was fantastic. I have that on CD. I managed to find a track one down a couple of years ago. Uh, it cost me like 30 bloody quid, but you know it was worth it. <laughs> um, yeah. And so Ray's continuing now. He's got a new singer called Kim, who I've only seen one video online on YouTube, which is really shitty cam, like, phone job. Um, and she's sounding good to me. I mean, if I see her proper quality and hear it properly, you'll know what she's like, but sounding good to me. Uh, it's weird because it's not Anita singing the songs and it doesn't seem right, but, you know, to me, Ray and Anita are too unlimited, which I'm sure a lot of, you know, big fans of them will think the same way. But, you know, at the end of the day, I'm willing to give her a try. She seems good enough and she's fit, so why not? Uh, but yeah, as I say, they did put out some new music a few years ago. Now, before I get to that, I want to just promote two amazing live performances they did for two Dutch radio stations, which are my go-tos when I want to listen to some Two Unlimited on YouTube. Uh, one was for Tribal Dance and one was for No Limit. Both of them with live bands and they mix the songs up and they sound absolutely incredible and pure, pure energy. If you want to be happy and be put in a good mood, check out these two videos because they are absolutely stunning. Right. So, they also put out some new songs. Uh, one was still unlimited, which I think they only did perform live. They also put out Nothing To Lose, which has got a music video, which is incredible. And that never got released as far as I'm off. I'm not sure if they released it on digital or not. It never got a physical release. But they did also put out another song, which has got a video called In The Name Of Love, which did get a CD, which I have right here. I actually managed to get a copy of it, so very happy to have that. Uh, I really like the song as well, it's great. That and Nothing To Lose are both brilliant records. So yeah, they're still going strong. As I say, Anita's going to be doing a solo career. Ray's continuing as Two Unlimited with the new singer, Kim. So, you know, they're still going to get great music. 
I'm gutted that we never got to have another Ryan and Anita two unlimited album. That's what I would ultimately have liked to have happen, but you know, it is what it is, isn't it? So, but yeah, I love two unlimited, they're amazing. Anyway, next up, guys, we've got a couple of country music albums, so that's really going to cut my audience right down, isn't it? But what the hell, here we go. So, first one I picked up is called The First Time, and it's by Kelsey Ballerini, who's a country pop artist. Um, I've only listened to this a couple of times so far, so bear with me, I might not know a lot about it, but the reason I bought this was because she put out a song called Peter Pan, which is on my playlist on my channel. Uh, I really like that song a lot, she's got a beautiful voice, and she's really good live as well. I've seen her on the Opry, and she's incredible. Um, but from what I can remember, Love Me Like You Mean It was one I liked. I liked Square Pegs and The First Time. Um, there was uh, also Dibs is another great track. And Yeah Boy was another good song. So there was a couple of really great tracks on there. I've, I need to listen to it a bit more really to give you a full overview. But she's also beautiful as well. But uh, <laughs> yeah, great album though. Then we got, oh, what's it called? Yeah, Storyteller by Carrie Underwood, who I recently got into when I started listening to country music. I was never really a fan of hers before, but I've really got into this new stuff she's doing and it's fantastic and, and her voice is just incredible. So on this one you've got Church Bells, Heartbeat and Smoke Break, which have all got videos and live performances at the Opry, which are just incredible. Uh, the other song, that I mean I like a lot of the songs on this album, it's a really solid album all the way around, but another one that really stands out is Choctaw County Affair, which is a brilliant record. Uh, I just love the sound of her voice and I love the lyrics of the songs, uh, they really tell great stories. Um, yeah, and it's a, a gatefold as well, which is always nice. So you get, you know, uh, nice pictures of Carrie in there, and you've got the lyrics for the songs. Um, yeah, a really nicely done album, actually. One of the better new releases. A lot of them, they don't really pay that much attention to detail. Uh, a lot of them now, they just put the two records in one sleeve, which is depressing. But yeah, Storyteller is a great, great album. Next up, oh, what we got? Oh, yeah, we have. Hero by Maren Morris, or Maren Morris, I'm never too sure how you say her name. Um, I got into her through a song I found on YouTube called My Church, which is incredible. Now, she's said to be a country artist, but I don't really, I wouldn't class it as country myself. I'd just say it was rock music, but, you know, whatever you want to call it, sub-genres and all that. Um, but, yeah, um, My Church, 80s Mercedes, both brilliant. 80s Mercedes is a great record. Uh, I really like Drunk Girls Don't Cry, How It's Done, Just Another Thing. Uh, I Wish I Was, Second Wind and Once. Um, Sugar and Rich are probably the two songs that I was a bit like, eh, they're all right, they're not the best. But all the rest of the records, uh, records, all the other songs are really great on this album. Um, yeah, she's really, really good. I'll put links down below in the description to videos for all of these artists as well. So if you want to check any of them out and see if you like them, then please do and you might find something new. Um, but she's definitely one to watch. Really great artist. Um, next up, I picked up I can just grab it. It is called Pageant Material, and it's the second album from Casey Musgraves. I've got the first album, which is just a fantastic album. Uh, this is just great. This has got a lot of the Hawaiian Beach Boys sound to it as well, which I believe she did actually work with um, Brian from the Beach Boys. Uh, I'm not sure if she worked with him on this album, but I know she's been working with him recently. Um, yeah, it's really, really cool. Uh, really not. She's just brilliant anyway, to be honest. The first album is rock solid, but you got like Dime Store Cow Girl, which I really like. Uh, Pageant Matilda is really good, the title song. Biscuits was brilliant, I love that record. Biscuits is weird because Biscuits is along the lines of the original album and doesn't really fit in this album, I found it. Because the, the actual the theme of this album is completely different to the previous album, so I don't know why Biscuits was put on this album, but there you go. Uh, Somebody to Love, Miserable, uh, Die Fun. Uh, Miserable Die Fun, is that how you say it? Yeah, that's, why, that's one song. <laughs> um, Cup of Tea was really cool, which it would become English. Um, yeah. I really like her, she's fantastic, really, really great, and really good live as well. I've seen her at the Opry and a few other live performances on YouTube, and very, very good. Uh, highly recommend both of her albums, so great stuff. And then the last one, um, I just want to say as well, which one was it now? Um, yeah, Kelsey Ballerini, I'll say a big thank you to Alex as well, Blue Tonic 78, one on camera, because he helped me get that from Amazon, because uh, the seller wouldn't send ship from America, so he got that for me. He also got this one as well which I was really happy to get because I didn't know it existed until a while ago and I was really glad to grab this one. It's called Annie Up by the Pistol Annies. So I have their first album, Hell on Heels, which I absolutely love. Uh, this is Miranda Lambert and there's Ashley, whose name I can't remember, and there's, is that Angelina? Yeah, weird spelling, but there you go. Um, 
I don't know much about the other two girls, but Miranda Lambert is one of my favourites. She's an incredible country artist. Um, this album I thought was good, not as good as Hell on Heels. Hell on Heels, for me, every single song is brilliant. Um, there isn't a bad track on there. This one was a bit... I mean, so like, Hush Hush is really good. Uh, I Feel a Sin coming on was really cool. Um, what else was there? Uh, Love by a Working Man was pretty decent. Unhappily Married was good. Um, yeah, Dear Sobriety as well. Yeah, I don't know. It just... I'll have to listen to it again, but I didn't, didn't have the initial impact that Hell on Heels had. When I first heard Hell on Heels, uh, even the, the actual, you know, the title song from that album was just like, it got me straight away. I was like, oh, I love this. Um, but yeah, I mean, I still love the Pistolanis. And apparently they're taking a break now. They will be coming back at some point. But yeah, they're on a break, which is a real shame. So there you go, guys. That's just the uh, quick overview of the vinyl I've picked up recently. So anything you want to check out, I say, links down below in the description to songs. Have a listen. See if there's anything you like. You might find something nice. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Thank you very much for sticking with me and watching it. And, you know, leave all your comments down below. And let me know any of your thoughts about anything I've spoken about and showed you. Um, yeah, great stuff. Anyway, <laughs> thanks, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.